Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Venkat Raman and uh, I am a consultant specialist in uh, kidney diseases or a consultant nephrologist and I have been uh, in medical practice for over 45 years so have a lot of experience in treating <clears throat> all these uh, kidney conditions but my special area of interest is hypertension or high blood pressure. Now, this is a very widespread uh, condition as you probably know and in this part of the world something like a quarter of the adults population will have hypertension and there is a little doubt that the incidence gradually increases along with age. So what are the uh, causes of high blood pressure? The commonest cause is actually what we call essential hypertension wherein the exact underlying mechanism is not a single abnormality. This is a, a constitutional problem related to a number of environmental factors as well as uh, genetic influences. And this essential hypertension accounts for 95% or more of all high blood pressure cases. <clears throat> so that is the commonest. Having said that, <clears throat> it is important not to miss the underlying cause in that minority of 2 to 5% of cases which may have a definitive cause which needs to be identified and treated. The important thing to remember <clears throat> is that the younger the individual with high blood pressure, the more likely it is that it is a secondary form where there is an underlying cause. <clears throat> so having said all this, uh, why would people get referred or refer themselves to see me? Uh, one is uh, confirmation that it is high blood pressure because there is uh, something known as white coat hypertension, which you may have heard of, whereby the blood pressure gets artificially elevated in front of a, a doctor or a nurse. So it's important to identify that uh, because, you know, you don't really want to put people on long term treatment if it is only high coat, uh, high white coat hypertension. <laughs> the <clears throat> second reason for why people get referred to me is because <clears throat> of exactly what I said earlier, there is a doubt that there may be an underlying cause and that needs investigating. And the third common cause why they may get referred to me is because the blood pressure is refusing to come under control <clears throat> and uh, they require expert uh, input in managing that. So those are the reasons why people uh, would come to me and uh, by and large uh, I will have managed to diagnose and treat uh, within the first couple of visits uh, and hopefully once things are under control I would not need to <clears throat> follow up any further. The question of what are the things you can do to help yourself uh, control the blood pressure better and there are a number of things. So diet and lifestyle are the absolute key to lowering blood pressure, preferably before <clears throat> going on to medications. So what can you do? <clears throat> really simple, straightforward things. One of the most uh, important ways of lowering blood pressure is by losing weight if you're overweight. <laughs> So we have uh, what's known as a body mass index or BMI, which is easy to calculate uh, if you look it up on the internet. And ideally, uh, a BMI should be between 20 and 25. <clears throat> so if you're well above that, then weight reduction is an important measure. But I would also add this should not be any crash fancy diet. It should be a slow and steady uh, proper weight loss long-term kind of diet. Secondly, uh, reduction in um, 
salt intake is important for lowering blood pressure. So that is definitely one to adopt. Increasing the intake of vegetable and fruit is also helpful. Last but not least, <clears throat> exercise is a very good way of uh, lowering blood pressure, but regardless, it's also very good for the heart. So <clears throat> these are the measures that I would strongly recommend uh, whether or not you're on medications for high blood pressure. Now, <clears throat> what's the purpose of the treatment of high blood pressure? Because you don't actually have any symptoms. You don't actually feel unwell just because your blood pressure is high. So the question is often asked, why should I take treatment? And the answer here is that <clears throat> you're not taking the treatment to feel better. You're taking the treatment to avoid <clears throat> the dangerous complications of high blood pressure, which includes heart disease, heart attacks, heart failure, strokes, kidney failure, peripheral vascular disease and gangrene. <clears throat> so these are all the complications which you want to avoid and that's really the key for why you take the blood pressure treatment. Now, in these uh, troubled pandemic times, the question is asked about the relationship between blood pressure and COVID. In a word, <clears throat> high blood pressure in itself does not predispose to any adverse outcome with COVID. But if hypertension is complicated by, say, heart failure or kidney failure, then yes, definitely <clears throat> that has an adverse effect. Uh, another question that's asked is whether blood pressure medications <clears throat> may put you at a disadvantage for COVID infections. And the answer is no, meaning you do not have to worry about uh, the medications. You can carry on taking them as usual. Uh, and of course, you certainly don't want to contract COVID, but if you did, uh, the medications would not uh, adversely affect the outcome. So that's a, a quick uh, run through of the basics of uh, hypertension. Uh, I can be <clears throat> uh, contacted through uh, the website and uh, otherwise through my secretary and I can do face-to-face -face consultations in Portsmouth or Guildford and more easily I can do the remote consultations by telephone or video uh, which, of course, can be much more flexible in terms of dates. So I hope uh, you have found this uh, little account useful. And uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me if uh, you have any queries. Thank you for watching and listening. Goodbye and good luck.